Hello guys, this video is going to showcase how you can utilize Radeon Pro's features to inject um, various methods of anti-aliasing as well as force and v-sync onto your game to help improve the overall smoothness of the game as well as improve your frame rates and your overall gaming experience. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to launch Radeon Pro. So basically let me um, delete this profile so I can kind of show you guys how you can do this from the start. So the first thing you want to do is for example, this whole entire um, tutorial is going to be based around Far Cry 3, so I'm going to show you guys the frame rate increases that you can have um, by using these um, this method I'm going to be showing you. So the first thing you're going to do is click this button over here, which is Add New Profile. Now what we're going to do is we're going to locate the executable file of Far Cry 3. What I did was I made it more convenient on myself, and I have a um, games and media hard drive, so all of my games are in one folder. So it's over here in the Far Cry 3, we're going to go into bin, and we're going to uh, click the Far Cry 3 D3, D3 D11, which is basically the, uh, the DirectX 11 executable variant. So let's click that, and now the profile is created. So the first thing we're going to see here is a visual tab. The visual tab is where you can inject the anti-aliasing method into the game. So to give a, a brief cover um, on anti-aliasing, anti-aliasing is basically a form of procedure which smooths out the the edges of the object lines within an image and gives you a much more smoother image as opposed to an image that has jagged um, edges or very sharp and raw uncut turns. Uh, basically you have I haven't really um, gotten into the MLAA. What I use is either FXAA or SMAA. So FXAA out of the three, so basically out of the three meaning that FXAA, SMAA, and MSAA, out of the three FXAA gives you the worst image quality while giving you the best performance. So basically your, your frame rate doesn't really even drop that much off as opposed to not having it enabled. Well, SMAA gives you a very good balance between the um, having a, a, a nice performance as well as not, you know, it, it really to me, in my personal opinion, I don't notice the difference between SMAA and MSAA. And an MSAA supposedly gives you the best image quality while having the worst performance. So SMAA is, is pretty much what I use. It's it's the pretty much the middle ground um, on paper. But like I said before, personally when I'm seeing it in the real world scenario, SMAA on Ultra gives me roughly the same image quality as MSAA on 4X or even 8X while not giving me the giant performance hit as having MSAA on those specific settings. So by clicking this box over here, and you can set whatever um, type of quality of level that you want the SMAA to be set to, the next time you launch the game, the SMAA will be injected into the game and the game will have SMAA um, as the anti-alias. And now the thing you want to do is within the game itself, you're going to want to make sure you choose a game that gives you the option to control anti-aliasing. So Far Cry 3 gives you that option. So when you do go into Far Cry 3, I'm pretty much going to show you guys the step-by-step -step for that within the game. You're going to want to go into Far Cry 3 and you're going to want to disable the MSAA or whatever anti-aliasing option because if you don't do that you're going to have the injection of SMAA from Radeon Pro as well as the application level line and um, anti-aliasing and they're both going to be running simultaneously which is going to have a even more um, negative impact on your performance as opposed to even utilizing Radeon Pro at all. So the next thing I want to show you guys is the tweaks in which you can um, force v-sync. So v-sync is basically locking the frame rate to the refresh rate of the monitor. So if you guys have been playing any games and noticing any stuttering or screen tearing, this is a very very helpful um, feature that Radeon Pro has. So right now it's set to driver default and what this means is that the uh, Radeon Pro is going to let the driver or the application handle the v-sync. So that means if Basically, you don't set any VSync options. If you turn off VSync in the game, the frame rate is allowed to go above the monitor's refresh rate, and as a result, you're gonna have some screen tearing. So what I use is dynamic, and I set the display refresh rate to the refresh rate of my monitor, which is 60 hertz. If you don't know your refresh rate, um, you should 
maybe try to look for the model number on your monitor and look it up. Most likely you do know the refresh rate and the majority of monitors on the market today and in households are 60 hertz. So once you, you pretty much have this set up like this, these are purposely grayed out and all you do is set the display rate of your monitor. So what the dynamic vSync control the Radeon Pro is going to do is if the frame rate um, attempts to go above 60 frames or 60 hertz, the vSync control will enable and Radeon Pro is going to lock the frame rate at 60 frames per second. And you're going to have a much more smoother gaming experience as a result. Now, suppose something hectic goes on in the screen and, you know, the game starts to drop below 60 frames per second, like an explosion happens and it's a lot to be rendered on the graphics card end. Radeon Pro is going to disable the V-Sync and then it just prevents the uh, the frame rate from dropping, say, 3 frames and going to 57 frames per second. And then all of a sudden, it just drops down to 30 frames per second. And then it stays there. Because sometimes V-Sync has that problem where as soon as the frame rate drops below 60, it goes half of the, re um, the display refresh rate maximum, which is 30 frames. And it actually stays there when your graphics card has way more power to run the game at a higher frame rate. But this is where triple buffering comes into play if you didn't have dynamic. But triple buffering is not you know fully effective so by having it where the, the v-sync turns off below 60 frames per second this uh, this eliminates the possibility of you know v-sync's um drawbacks taking effect so another thing is the unscreen displays this is a very good feature if you want to see your it basically you can have it set to up here where, I'm, where the, where the um, mouse is on or you can have it set to down here which is either top or bottom. I usually set it at the top. So this basically shows you all the attributes of your graphics card in real time while you're gaming. So this gives you a very good idea of whether the game is maybe, um, I mean, basically whether your overclock is taking effect. For instance, if you overclock, you should see your GPU core utilization drop down because your, your graphics card is overclocked, so it doesn't, need to, it doesn't really need to um, utilize much of itself to hit the specific frame rate max which is about 60 frames per second. So usually when you have V-Sync enabled your graphics core utilization, if it's a very powerful graphics card, it usually is not going to be anywhere near the maximum threshold of about 99 to 100 percent because it's hitting a frame rate limiter so the most of its performance is not utilized. It shows you your, you can pretty much select what you want it to show but this is this is what I specifically find the most important for me to be to to see while I'm playing which are these specific settings. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys a um, sort of sort of example of what you can expect to have when you have V-Sync on dynamic and also when you have an injector of SMA. I'm also going to show you, this is how you enable the uh, on-screen display of Radeon Pro. So the on-screen display that you just seen before is of your graphics card and this on-screen display when you click this over here with these little two gears and then you go to advanced. This is the on-screen display of Radeon Pro itself. So I have it set to when I'm in the game I hit Control O to launch the OSD panel. I hit Control S to toggle between having SMAA enabled or having it disabled and then I have Control F to toggle between having X FXAA enabled or having it disabled. I haven't really messed with the location because the default location which is like the bottom of the screen over here is pretty much adequate enough for me. So I'm going to save that here and show you in real time the performance increase that you can have for injecting SMAA as opposed to using the in-game MSAA or any other kind of anti-aliasing technique. Alright guys, this is going to be the example showcasing using Far Cry 3 the significant improvement in frame rates that you can obtain while using Radeon Pro's anti-aliasing injectors as opposed to the in-game anti-aliasing method. So, I'm just going to show you guys the on-screen display that we had set earlier. This shows you the graphics card, shows you the current temperature, how much of its percentage is being utilized, the core clocks, the memory clock, as you can see my graphics card is currently overclocked, and the amount of virtual RAM that the game is using for its textures out of the amount of available RAM that the graphics card has. And with my guy just standing here doing nothing, the frame rate is about 79 frames per second. So let's launch the uh, the on-screen displays of Radeon Pro. I have the hotkey set to Control O, and it brings up this, which basically shows you which injection technique 
is enabled. As you can see, no injection technique is enabled. And the dynamic VSync control, which is DVC, is disabled, which allows my frame rate to escape above the monitor's refresh rate uh, maximum. And the note, it also have another form of um, on-screen display, which is a more subtle look. Basically, it's the same exact thing. You, it shows you the same exact things you just seen, but it's just that it's it's more out of the way of the game, so you can actually see more of the game. And if you want to run this um, while you're playing the game, so basically, right now, there is no form of anti-aliasing applied, even within the game. Let me show you. Options, video, MSAA is currently disabled is off so the game is running on ultra just with no anti-aliasing at all so what we're going to do here I'm going to inject the SMAA let's put it back to the other on screen display so you can see better the, the hot key for that was control S now you can see that it is enabled and the frame rate suffer was just about 4 frames per second that I just lost so now what we're going to do here, basically what I said previously is that when I have SMAA, I'm not sure if you guys can see, when I have SMAA enabled, it looks just as good as having MSAA on 4X or 8X, even though 8X is pretty much useless on a 1080p resolution, so 4X is pretty much the most ideal and the most massive you want to go. Now MSAA on 2X looks worse, keyword worse than SMAA that I have enabled that just takes off about four frames per second and we're gonna see how much of a performance hit MSAA has and how much a performance gain you can get on your other games by doing this procedure so I'm gonna to toggle off SMAA just control S now you can see SMAA is off and it goes back up about four FPS so let's let's um turn on MSAA within the game like I said before to get the same sort of image quality as the SMAA I need to have MSAA at roughly about 4x. Let's put this on video. 4x. As you can see, let's hit apply. Hit OK. Let's back out. Now, by applying the same guy, same situation, he's standing there doing nothing. And look, look at what the frame rate is now. We've pretty much lost near 30 frames by just applying MSAA at a 4x which looks pretty much the same as SMAA on ultra and SMAA on ultra just takes off about four frames per second so let's also you can also you can piggyback the anti-alias and let's 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 re-inject SMAA I did that wrong all right SMAA is now injected alongside MSAA at 4x and as you can see, the frame rate doesn't even drop off that far from having MSAA by itself. So just to show you guys again, I'm going to um, I'm going to disable MSAA. Put it back to off. I'm gonna hit apply. Hit OK. And you can see the frame rate jumps right back up. MSAA enabled, I mean SMAA enabled by itself and MSAA disabled, you get roughly the same image quality. There's no image quality differences that I can detect. Even if I, if I stick my face literally inside the monitor and try to look for any jagged lines, I don't see any difference between that and MSAA. And yet the frame, the performance is just way, way better with SMAA. So try this procedure that I showed you guys with all your other games and if you guys run into any problems or anything, just post it in the comment box. I'll try to help you to the best of my ability. Uh, this, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate that. Later, guys.